when we have multiple tissue types present and working together, so two, uh, two or more of the four primary tissue types, if we have two or more present, then we could be dealing with an organ. An organ is something that is very specialized. Um, we're look, gonna look at an example of skin right here. If you look at a cross section of skin, you'll actually be able to find all four of the primary tissue types present. Let's see if we can find them. Um, so what do we have here? We have for sure epithelial tissue, right? That's lining the, out, the outer surface of skin. What else do we have? We've got connective tissue that is providing support, right, down in the lower regions, connective tissue, uh, maybe some loose connective tissue, and then it looks like some adipocyte tissue down here, um, adipose tissue. What else do we have? Um, muscle tissue. Here's some muscle right there. What's that muscle doing? It's attaching down to the base of this hair. This is the muscle that would allow you to have goosebumps. So muscle tissue right there. Our fourth tissue type is nervous tissue, nerve tissue. Um, that is going to be needed, here it is labeled. Um, we need a nerve in order to be able to activate this muscle. So these tissues, they work together in order to accomplish some function. The structure of skin is complex, um, but again, I'd encourage you to just think about it in terms of, again, the four primary tissue types. Those four different tissue types are working together to, to do what skin does. A lot of times organs work together in sets. And this is where we'll be talking about organ systems. In humans, there are 11 organ systems that function throughout the body. We'll pretty much be spending a chapter on each of these organ systems. So for right now, I'd just like you to kind of familiarize yourself with them. Like what is an organ system? Um, know some examples of organ systems. But again, we'll be getting into the details of all of these as we go through throughout the semester. Um, we're gonna spend a few chapters on the nervous system just because of how complex it is. So organ systems, um, this is where we're headed in the class. Lots of different organ systems we'll be looking at. Finally, just to wrap up this chapter, where do all of these specialized cells and tissues come from? Um, it's a good question to ask. So very early on in development, there are special cells that are said to be pluripotent. They have a potential of becoming almost any type of cell. And that's a very special thing. Once cells differentiate, uh, they're pretty much stuck on that track. There are very few that can, can change course and become a different cell type um, afterwards. So uh, what about in adults? Like once you're an adult, they have to have some way of replacing tissues as needed. And this is where stem cells come into play. Even in the adult human body, there are some stem cells that are retained. We don't call them embryonic stem cells anymore. Rather, they're just stem cells. Okay, so um, some examples of this would be bone marrow. The cells that are in bone marrow, they have the potential to become any type of blood cell that we might need. And so that's an example of a stem cell in the adult body. In the case of um, the, the epidermis that we've been talking about, deep in the layers of the epidermis, there are sort of some spots where um, stem cells can reside. They just kind of hang out until they're needed. And then as cells flake off the top, what happens is these cells will migrate towards the surface and they differentiate to become whatever cell type is needed at that location. So really amazing the way that cells can replace themselves. Um, it's in large part due to the, the, the stem cells that are present.